Hello friends, it's good to be with you today. I hope this finds you well. Um, this is going to be broadcast or published a little less than a week after the last Faith and Life event of this year. This was the 17th season of that event. Uh, we'll include a link to the um, whole recording of that event. We were thrilled and privileged to have uh, Coach Ryan Saunders, the coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves, join us to conclude the 17th annual season. Uh, it was the first time we've ever done it virtually, and I, my sense was it worked well. We got good feedback. A um, lot of people wrote in questions, which was part of the design of doing it that way. Uh, it allowed people to both send in questions beforehand and also to send in questions in real time uh, as uh, the coach was speaking. And I want to zero in on one of the questions that was asked today as a way into a larger topic as it relates to our faith. And since the event of that um, talk, uh, a number of people have commented on this question, and I would agree with them. I think it was one of the most poignant and um, profound questions. And as it happened, it came from a 14-year-old uh, boy, um, and it actually got Coach Saunders a little choked up if you end up watching the video, um, and I understand it. And I'm going to read the entire question again, and, I, and if, if the person who sent it in is watching this by chance, I want to say again, thank you for sending it in. Thank you for your honesty. Um, thank you for your vulnerability. Uh, again, it comes from a 14-year-old boy. Here's what he says. I'm a 14-year-old eighth grader and find it hard to be open about my faith. When I do, I seem to get made fun of for believing in fairy tales or told that I should believe in science instead of a phony God. I'm going to read more. There's more to the question, but that's a key line. Science instead of a phony God, as if the two are in conflict or opposites or mutually exclusive. What he goes on to say is, it's so frustrating. I don't have hatred for the people that say these things, but I don't understand why they have such a problem with what I believe. I just pray that God can show them love instead of hate. And then he goes on to say, Coach Saunders, have you ever been made fun of because of your faith? What is faith like in the NBA? And he concludes with, I got to the point where I wouldn't say a word around people who are bad-mouthing Christian beliefs as they would all turn on me. I've mentioned in this uh, podcast before in prior episodes that uh, for a couple of years now I've taught um, extended class a few weeks uh, each year on the intersection between faith and science. And a longer story for another time, that class is actually part of the uh, reason that this podcast actually began. <clears throat> when I did that class, um, I opened uh, by asking the question, why would we discuss faith and science? You know, it seems kind of like an arcane, dry, uh, academic topic. Why would we bother? And my basic answer to that is that it's a genuine and real barrier to faith. I'm reading one of the slides from my class here. It's a genuine and real barrier to faith. The very next slide, uh, same heading, why discuss faith and science? And then I have a few points that provide evidence for the fact that it is a real barrier to faith. The first of those bullets is this, and this comes from a, um, a blurb about a new book at the time about the intersection of faith and science. This is the first sentence of that blurb. It says, many things threaten the faith of youth today, but none more than science. And the question from that young 14-year-old reminded me of that truth and reminded me of how critically important it is as Christians that we get this right, that we dispel the myths and misunderstanding of the presumed conflict between faith and science, and instead recognize the true story of the intersection of faith and science. And I would go further than saying, uh, it's not that there's just not a conflict. It's not like it's neutral. I would state it more strongly than that and say, we live in a culture that values science, not in spite of our faith, but precisely because of our Christian faith. Now again, that requires some unpacking, and I actually, because of this question, uh, I'm intending to do some more episodes about this in the future. So uh, a couple things. One is a question for you. 
If you have questions or concerns or issues around faith and science that you'd like me to address, please let me know. And I would like to try to respond to them in a future episode, that's one thing. And the other thing, and we could talk about the Bible, we could talk about history, we could talk about theologians over two millennia, um, we could talk about discoveries of Christians in the realm of science. I wanna say just one fact today, um, which I think in some ways encapsulates uh, the myths, the misunderstanding, and the lack of knowledge about our own faith. I have heard atheists um, who are deeply opposed to Christianity uh, challenge Christianity on scientific basis by making this argument. I, I, they'll say, haven't you heard of the Big Bang? Assuming that the Big Bang trumps the story of creation in the Bible. I've addressed that in a prior episode, we'll talk about it more. What I find highly ironic about that uh, argument, if you wanna call it that, it's not an argument, is that the Big Bang was discovered by none other than a Christian Catholic priest. His name is George Lemaitre. We'll include a Wikipedia link to him today. Perhaps you've heard of Hubble. We have the Hubble spacecraft. Uh, he is actually joint, he discovered something else before Hubble did. For a while it was called the Hubble Law. In 2018, I believe it became known as the Hubble Lemaitre Law. And again, he, a Christian priest, discovered at the time it was called the hypothesis of the primeval atom. Today we know it as the Big Bang. That's one among countless examples of how we get it wrong when it comes to faith and science and we have to get it right for the sake of young boys like that 14-year-old who sent that question in last week. In the weeks ahead, we'll continue to cover this topic precisely for his sake and for the sake of our future. Thanks, as always, for listening. Be well, stay in touch, and God bless.